touched on it through this on, on part of the reason why you're here and why, why you're doing this deal at this moment. We're zero bound. The market says for five years, Jim, I don't need to tell you, uh, you, you you're well versed. So where is that pushing you to take more risk at the moment? Well, listen, it's a great question. I think, I think that as an investor with our platform around the globe, more than 400 billion of, of assets, obviously a big PE uh, history with our firm. But the reality is over the last decade, uh, a big, big majority of our, of our firm is in credit. And a large portion of that is really investment grade solutions for insurance assets. So, you know, when you think about where we are, and you're right, we are we are in a low rate world, and, and last week's actions out in Jackson Hole will probably continue that for a while. We're, we're you know, well, we have parts of our business that are trying to get double digit plus, you know, a, a mid single digit yield on great long duration assets that works very well for us. So, um, you know, from from our perspective, it is getting more challenging. You have to navigate a, a pretty tricky environment right now, but. Uh, again, when you're trying to make, you know, five, six, seven percent, you can find places to do that that are appropriate. So let's talk about maybe the opportunities. We caught up with PIMCO that they're prepared to go overweight the travel sector, long airlines on secured bonds. I mean, some would say that's a big risk play. Is that the kind of risk that you're prepared to take at the moment? Travel, some of these beaten dimes, travel, energy, hotels. Would you have that level of risk? Well, listen. When you when you run a 400 billion plus portfolio, you you have your finger in a lot of a lot of pots. Um, you know, it's been it's been uh, well uh, noted that we have been uh, participating in some of the really uh, unique opportunities, whether in the airline space or in the travel space. We led a transaction for Expedia earlier this year. Uh, it's been mm -hmm. noted we were we were active in a variety of financings in, around the airline space. We've been active in a couple of the restructurings that are some dips in Latin America. So. You know, well, well, we are a thematic investor. I don't think it's, I think it's a little bit too early to call the end or the bottom of this pandemic. Uh, I think you need to really uh, think about structure and where you are in a capital structure. So we're not afraid of investing in, in challenging industries, but it really gets down to structure, security, and making sure, you know, the skills that we've honed over 30 plus years that we're bringing to the table. And we, we've been able to continue to do that. I look at spreads, we've compressed all the way back in on IG pretty much back to where we were pre-COVID. Jim, do you think that they continue to compress, given what you heard from Jackson Hole last week? Well, I, I think the, the, um, you know, the, the Fed is going to continue to be a very active player on high quality assets. And there's going to be dispersion in the markets between low quality assets and, and high quality assets. What's unique about this transaction is duration. It's hard to get long duration. Uh, and we were able to do that in this transaction, but certainly, uh, the trend is positive in terms of IG spreads, notwithstanding uh, any kind of dislocation from a from a global event. So, you know, for for us, we've been we've been um, in the IG world. We we reinvested a lot in in March and April when they widened out, but we've still yeah. continued to have a, a focus on that area in our business. What's the biggest risk here? That a vaccine comes too early, and maybe the big opportunities pass you by. Well, I think you have to be patient. I mean, certainly uh, this, this pandemic came out of the blue um, and the, the impact um, on consumer behavior, on consumer activity, uh, especially in the U.S. where the consumer is 70 plus percent of the market, uh, there's a lot of continued to be you know, uh, known unknowns in the next 12 to 24 months. Um, and so I, you know, I think, again, we, we're fortunate we have a, a, a broad platform between private equity, credit, and real assets. So we have our fingers in a lot of uh, opportunities. But I, you know, I, I think at these kind of levels, one needs to be measured and thoughtful about how they're putting money to work. Certainly when we think about Asia, broadly speaking, and Japan in particular, uh, you know, we, we think there are opportunities that are consistent with how we invest in that country per se. Um, you know, I would say that we'd say the same thing about opportunities right now in India a bit, uh, Australia, um, and so we're, we're trying to pick our spots in that region that fit how we invest uh, with our value and structuring bent. So in terms of EM versus DM, I mean, the lean there, it, 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 do, do you have a sense of where that goes next year? Lots of people are saying to me, look, what the Fed did last week was an ignition torch to buy EM. And I know we can't treat the whole church the same, but in terms of that lean to DM credit, it's our EM credit. My apologies. Yeah, cer certainly the, the concerns about EM versus DM in March and April have, have certainly subsided, and there's been a nice compression between EM 
Um, how much, how much more that has to tighten is is an open question. Uh, you know, if you look at our portfolios, we're we're probably a majority of DM around the globe, and we do have some EM over overlay, which we are excited by, obviously. Uh, but I think there, you know, with where spreads are right now, uh, a more balanced approach is is probably the way. And again, that's just that's that's key how we invest from a value bet. For you, where's the biggest opportunity at the moment? Well, when we think around the globe right now, I mean, certainly early days on commercial real estate, early days on aviation, broadly speaking, two big ecosystems um, that, you know, if you, you really need to be involved from front to back and, and aviation is from manufacturing to airlines and everything in between, uh, certainly in commercial real estate, you know, it's a slower moving train, uh, but it will have a big impact. A lot of capital has been raised, a lot of money has been put in the ground. Um, and as the, as the consumer uh, readjust to this new world, uh, there will no doubt be opportunities in, in commercial real estate um, that are probably, again, again a, bit, a bit slower moving just because of the nature of the assets.